So it was quite an exciting day in the world of astronomy today as we've seen our first picture of a black hole and a woman who has spent much of her career studying uh, these things joins me right now, Dr. Megan Uri from Yale University. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, thank you. So what was it like for you to wake up today? Uh, you, you've been studying things like black holes for most of your career. Like us, you've never actually seen one before today. What was it like to actually uh, lay your eyes on a black hole? Oh, it was absolutely terrific. It was actually a little bit uh, emotional. You know, uh, people have been talking about these things for decades, and I've been studying them for decades and doing sort of indirect uh, measurements of them, and now we have a picture. It's amazing. So how did that picture compare to what you thought you would see when yeah. you first saw a black hole. Yeah, I have to say it looks a lot like the simulations. It's a lot like we expected. So it's not a shocker of a result. It's not changing our paradigm. In fact, it's, it's uh, validating Einstein's theory of general relativity all over again. What are we actually seeing? So we'll put up a picture okay. of, our viewer. of the, the black hole itself. We're seeing this, this dark spot in the middle and then this light, this ring of light that's right. surrounding it. Yeah. What are those elements? So first of all, the dark spot is where the black hole is. Of course, the horizon of a black hole is defined as the region within that horizon, no matter or light can escape. Hence, it looks black. We don't mm -hmm. see any light from it. However, uh, there's a lot of matter in there, which exerts a strong gravity. So particles are trying to move into the black hole, moving toward the black hole. And as they're essentially falling into the black hole, mm -hmm. as they do that, they lose a lot of their gravitational energy and it turns into light. And that's what we see very bright light from outside the black hole. So the light is, is, is not actually light escaping from the black no. hole because light cannot right. escape right. from a black hole. It is the, something that's being taken from the matter that is falling into the black hole. Yeah, so that's one of the things that people may not realize is that although the black hole itself is black, the region outside it is super bright. And these things are sitting at the centers of galaxies, which of course are filled with stars. But often the, the region around the black hole can outshine all the stars in the galaxy. And that is just because of the, that, that light is essentially the energy that is, that is escaping. Exactly. From matter that's being yeah. pulled into the black hole. It's like if you, if you drop something to the floor, it falls because of gravity, and it gains energy as it goes there, right? It's, it's moving faster when it hits the floor than when you dropped it. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. That energy gain, in this case, would, you would notice it because it makes a sound when it hits the floor and it bounces, perhaps. Around the black hole, there's friction between particles, and that heats up the matter outside the black hole, and it glows. And it glows very strongly at many wavelengths, including this particular image was taken at radio wavelengths, very long wavelengths, but there's light emitted at much uh, shorter wavelengths, which is much higher temperature, essentially a temperature gas. How were we able to, to get this image? I and mean, this, is, this is an incredible thing it's to capture. It's an incredible capture. technological uh, success, and it wasn't easy, and, it's, and it's, we're ha it's happening now because the technology has just gotten to the point where one could do this experiment. So it uses a technique called radio interferometry. That means you combine images from different telescopes that are spread around the Earth, and your effective telescope size is of the order of the size of the Earth. So that allows you to take very high resolution pictures. That and the fact that they operated these telescopes at the shortest possible wavelengths those telescopes could access. Those two things give you the sharpest picture possible. Now, radio wavelengths is quite, uh, radio light has quite long wavelengths, which is goes against high resolution, but only in the radio have we perfected this technique of combining different telescopes separated by large distances. Mm. That's really the key. It's called a long baseline interferometry. Amazing. So let's talk about the size of this for a second and put it into perspective for us how large this object actually is compared to our sun, our solar mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. how, how large is this black hole? Yeah, so first of all, its mass is six and a half billion times the mass of our sun, okay? That's pretty big, that's a huge black hole. It's one of the largest ones we've measured, it, uh, its mass. But it's small compared to the galaxy. Actually, a, a galaxy like our own Milky Way, which is not huge, 
has about a hundred billion suns in it, a hundred billion stars. So it weighs a uh, hundred times what this what this uh, particular black hole weighs. And and actually, the galaxy that this black hole is in is is still bigger than ours. Mm. So so compared to a galaxy, the mass of a black hole is not that huge. But it's a tremendous amount of mass to put in a very small volume. So how big is it? Um, a black hole that size has a, a, a diameter, if you like, of about a light day, meaning light would take a day to cross it. So light travels very, very fast. Yes. Uh, that's sort of of the same order of magnitude as the size of our solar system. So if it's, it takes about 10 hours for light to get from the sun out to Pluto. Mm -hmm. That's the same sort of size. Got it. Amazing. And, and, and speaking of, of the speed of light, so this is a, a black hole that is quite far away, and the light that we're seeing that has escaped, as, as we discussed from the black hole, is actually quite old. Right? My understanding yes. is it's, yes. it's millions, in fact, of years old. Yes. How, how long ago was this image essentially created that we're now capturing? Yeah. yeah, so the light took 55 million years to arrive at us from that particular galaxy. Now, that sounds like a lot, but that's actually quite close to us uh, in universal terms. The universe has, uh, you know, from the furthest reaches we, we've seen, probably light could travel 10 billion uh, years, and this is only 55 million years. So, but it is kind <laughs> so of funny. It means we're seeing, new, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's brand new, but we're seeing a bit of history, yeah. It's really amazing. The life of a black hole, what can you tell from this image? Mm. Uh, as to where in its lifespan, if that's even an accurate term, this black hole is, sort of, you know, from from formation to you know wherever black holes ultimately end up. Can you can you walk through that a little bit? Yeah. Well, I would say with with just the one image at one epoch, we're not really seeing the whole history of right. the growth. Right. But this is such a large black hole, we are pretty sure it must have acquired almost all that mass over time by matter falling into it. So it's had billions of years to do that, probably we think in short spurts. So maybe it eats a lot of matter for a million years and mm. then goes dormant. What um, would make a black hole go dormant? What, what, how does yeah, it not just sort of gobble really, everything up over time? Yeah. How I know does that's it not? not a technical term, so, but <laughs> it, it would seem the bigger it gets, the more mass, the well, more gravity, yeah, and therefore yeah, the, the more, more it would, it would pull, pull in. Stuff in. Well, there there are barriers to it uh, to matter falling in to black holes or or into anything. For example, our Earth orbits the sun, right? And we're not falling into the sun, even though there's a strong gravitational force between the sun and the Earth, and that's because we have we uh, we are just going to keep rotating around until we can lose what's uh, physicists call angular momentum, which you could do by colliding with another particle. Well, the Earth is not colliding with Mercury or Venus, thank goodness, or Mars, and so we're not heading into the Sun. So if you take the analogy to a black hole, you have a lot of matter around the black hole, but a lot of it's just orbiting and it can't fall in until it loses that orbital energy. Mm -hmm. And it does that by colliding with other particles. So one of the things we learned from the picture is that there is some kind of accretion disk around the black hole. That means matter trying to fall in settles into a disk and the particles are just orbiting that black hole. And as some particles collide, maybe one can move more toward the black hole as one moves further away. Hmm. So that's how the accretion, that's how we thought the accretion happens. And this picture is, lines up with that. that how, that's how it looks like the accretion happens. And you said earlier and you're saying again now that this is more or less what we thought a black hole would look like. Does it also comport with larger theories? Uh, Einstein, theory of relativity, um, you know, other sort of theories that, that create our views of the universe, uh, space-time, things like that. Does all of that seem more or less in line with what we're seeing from this image? Yeah, so uh, it's kind of shocking how much Einstein got right without ever having done an experiment. Mm. He just, uh, you know, came up with a lot of this in his mind. So in his theory of general relativity, uh, black holes were a, a prediction of that theory. They came out of the math of that theory. But I think for, for quite a long time, people didn't really think they existed. And then we started to see unusual galaxies like M87, the subject of the photograph, 
uh, that have weird things like big jets coming out of them, long linear things moving in some cases near the speed of light out outward from the center, uh, uh, presumably powered by these black holes. So that was uh, that was cool. And then another of Einstein's theory that doesn't get quite as much press, his theory, special theory of relativity, yeah. says that when part radiating particles, if you like a light bulb, when a light bulb is moving at nearly the speed of light, it beams its light in the forward direction, in the direction of its motion. So one of the things you see about the photograph, the image, is there are it's very asymmetric. There's sort of a bright side and a dim side. And that comes about because of the velocity. The bright side is material moving toward us at nearly the speed of light, and the dim side is material moving away from us at nearly the speed of light. And that was, again, what we expected, but exactly verified by this image. You see what's called, that's called Doppler beaming. You see that thing happening. So also validating that theory of Einstein's, which I have to tell you, when I was an undergraduate learning special relativity, I didn't believe that stuff. I just thought this is too wacky. And here it is, nature has done it. Amazing, wow, I, I feel a lot smarter just having this conversation and, and, and listening to you, which must be a very exciting day for you. What do you think comes next now? now? Now that we've gotten this image of a black hole for the first time, how do you think, if at all, that the study of black holes will change as a result of this? Well, I'm very excited for what the Event Horizon Telescope will do next. So they've, they've observed this one giant black hole for uh, uh, some period of time using a huge array of telescopes. They're now adding telescopes, which improves their uh, resolution and improves their sensitivity. They're also observing the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Now this black hole is about a thousand times smaller it's um, not active, that is, it's not shining brightly the way M87 is, but it's ours, right? It's in the center of our galaxy, so it's much closer, and that's why they're able, they're able to access it. But um, I noticed today, one of the things I learned today is they didn't report the results from that, those observations. Okay. So that's interesting, and there were some, uh, there was some discussion of it in the press conference. My understanding is that, um, uh, they the data are harder to analyze and it's immediately obvious to me why for the very big black hole because it's large uh, the time scale on which things change is longer and so during the observation during a day as the telescopes observe and as the earth rotates and they get different views the object is not changing much so it makes it easier to analyze the data our black hole being smaller is more variable and so it's changing as the telescopes are moving and mm -hmm. and unfolding those two things what changed because the the view of the telescopes was different and what changed because the actual emission was different that's much harder to unpack so they're going to be doing that so i think um it's very exciting times ahead for the event horizon telescope and for those of us who do other kinds of studies of black holes i think we're um we now have a tool for testing our ideas and, and validating them. Well, very exciting. Congratulations to you and to the whole community. I'm sure it's an exciting time. Well, and, uh, congratulations to the Event Horizon absolutely. people who did a great job. Thank you so much for uh, enlightening us. This is really interesting. Appreciate it. Great to talk to you.